Mindshare believes that everything starts and ends in media. Every aspect of human life has been transformed at some point with changes in media. My guest today, Ravi Rao, CEO of Mindshare Mina, will explain to us how media impacts our life. Ravi, I would like to thank you for being with us on Tawasal Show. And I would like you please to tell me a bit about MyChair and about your role all the way to being the CEO of MyChair. Thank you. Uh, I think MyChair has been a great ride for me. Uh, my first memory of MyChair has been in Dubai in 99 when MyChair was launched. So I was the number two employee. I began at the same office in Garud and that's been the interesting story. But uh, when I look at myself, I can say I'm an accident by chance. I got into media. I never thought I would be in media. I never understood advertising. But I was a marketer who got into media because of my silly ways in my younger days. But then uh, media has really made me what I am today. And I really enjoy because no two days are similar. And that helps me to make things really challenging the situation the way things are. So it's a long story, but that's how I ended up in Mindshare. And here I am again in the last two years, I got promoted as CEO and a uh, terrific challenge, but I'm enjoying every single day. What characterizes Mindshare compared to the other media agencies under Group M? I think most media agencies have some unique trait or others. Uh, for us at Mindshare, it's to do with complete performance marketing and end-to-end -end solutions for our clients, right from getting insights all the way to deep end analytics. So it's a big plus because we have all the heads of data to everyone in-house. We don't do outsourcing, and that's a great boon for us as Mindshare. Ravi, I have to tell you congrats for the new wins, Pizza Hut, General Mills, Dubai Safari Parks. How is it like to win new business in these difficult days? I think it's an interesting one, right? If you look in the last two years, I think most big clients have had a pitch or go one way or other. Uh, it's normal. In most agencies cycle, you always go through pitches. Either you are defending or you're going on an offense trying to win a business. For me, the interesting part is you learn something new on a new category, new brand, and that's a great learning curve because that's what we all are here for. So it's a great energy and that's what keeps us going in our business. It's like a company that says, I won a new tender, and that's the kind of energy feel that gets through. A big chunk of the budget of Mindshare goes on TV. How does TV serve Mindshare and its clients? It really is not the case. Uh, if I look at the total billing split that I have to do, I would say the TV still takes close to 40% of our total uh, volumes. And if I look at the revenue base, suddenly the tilt is more towards digital. So it's a very unique thing. And I think the good part is we have a very good balanced media split across TV, print, radio, cinema, outdoor, and of course online. When I say online, this includes search, social, programmatic, to all the way to analytics as well. So it's a complete different mix. I think when you look at the monitored spends, it tells a different story. If I look at the monitored spends in this region, it shows it's grown. But in reality, we all know close to a billion dollars has vanished in the last three and a half years in this region alone. Ad spends have actually come back. It has become regressive. So to me, the whole idea is where the consumer is, what he or she is doing, is where we deploy funds. And that's the right thing to do for any brands. And most agencies would be in a similar mix. When we look at the online expenditures, they are in fact very big for Mindshare. How do you see the uh, proportions becoming next between the online and offline first for Mindshare and second for the overall media agency? True. If I look at the region per se, across all agencies, all clients put together as an industry, I would say digital is on a tipping point because either this year, depending on who you talk to, or next year, clearly digital mix share of the advertising spend is growing beyond the TV spend for the first time in this region. But I think it's also a misguided notion to say TV is dying. TV never died anywhere in the world. We know the old song, Video Kill the Radio Star, 
but radio is still successful. If you look at most of the estimates of ad spends, radio is still growing marginally. But the share of the mix may change, the pie might change, but the absolute spends are going up. In my mind, I think it's also a question of the blurring of lines between TV and online. Because you are watching TV now, now you can watch the same program on your mobile handset. Mm -hmm. So do you call that, are you watching TV or are you watching online? The second thing is there is a time shift viewing. A lot of us, because we are hard pressed for time, because of the smart TV penetration in this region is so high, that I can actually program myself to say I will go at 10 o'clock in the evening to watch a program that I missed at 7 o'clock. Is the strategy of Mindshare to have giant clients or a portfolio of smaller clients? Now I know you will answer me both, but I would like to have like something really inspiring out of this. Okay, for us at Mindshare, there is no defined strategy to say why I should go after a large client or a small client. If I really look at the mix of clients we have, we have one large client followed by a host of seven to eight mid-sized clients, which I would say in the range of $5 million to $10 million across the network in MENA alone. And we have multiples of scores of clients which are extremely small. But small doesn't mean it's a relative measure, right? So in markets like Iraq, for me, the small client is significant enough and I know they're gonna grow in the future as we go along. We are one of the few offices, agencies that has an office in Baghdad and it's a great feeling. And I think we also want to grow with the clients. That's been the way that we are. Now, given the fact, the type of client mix that I have now, would I like some of the big clients? Definitely, yes, uh, we would go after them but there is no strategy to say I need to go after a large or a smaller client. How is it like to depend on a big spender like Safi Danon or Etihad Airways or Zen previously? If I look from a marketing angle from my previous job, if I have to talk about it, there are some brands which are you are launching, you need to spend a lot more investment time behind it and you spend dollars, you get returns maybe five years later. But there are other brands which are already reached the maturity stage. It's a cash cow. Mm -hmm. I need to spend minimal dollars in advertising and I get huge sales return. Mm -hmm. Now it's a combination mix of what you do with clients. Sometimes large clients help you to develop the basic base that you require. It's like the bread. But a host of other clients become the cheese and the topping that you go along with. But invariably what most agencies forget, and this is where the attention gets lacked out, is the fact these small cheeses and crumbs that I talk about can tomorrow become the basic bread. And if you don't grow with them, you're out of the equation as well. This is where agencies make a mistake. So for me, the question of getting the client's trust by doing the right things is far more important than getting my budgets covered by getting the dollars in mm -hmm. for the year just to ensure my p is right. It never works. It's always long term, never short term. What was the damage after losing Zayn? I would say it's more emotional than financial. Emotional because uh, some of my team members, the core lead players, have worked on the business for over a decade. And uh, for me, it's been for three and a half years on Zayn. I think it's one of the best clients that we have ever had. And we still have until a month more. But for me, the reading is uh, when you have worked so close across multiple geographies, including Iraq, and the coordination, the camaraderie that goes on is an interesting challenge. For me, it's gonna be a vacuum for a while, but that's more about it than a real from a financial angle. So for me, the Zayn also helped in elevating some of the new stuff that we did. For example, we were one of the first agencies to actually monetize data for them in Iraq. And we helped Huawei benefit during the Ramadan last year. We, we won a couple of FEs for that and MMA awards and I think it's a great exposure. To me, that is the vacuum and it's going to take a while for us to get back to that level of rhythm at a, such a large client. So yes. What's the recovery plan after then? I think the recovery plan is very much there. There is a lot of attention that's being paid to some of our growing clients. Uh, Pizard, for example, is a great story that we can talk about. We find we have moved the needle from basic planning 
to all the way into getting involved in the real insights coming out of the same store sales that occurs on a not just a weekly basis even on a daily basis so suddenly you find that the intellectual cap capacity within the agency teams have grown up and we are also got new people on board suddenly you find the energy levels are back to normalcy again so it's a matter of do you like the brand do you like to get involved in the brand and as a ceo i would say i'm a hands on planner so to me it doesn't matter what title i hold it's what do i bring on to my clients and if most of us are thinking like that thankfully i have a team that thinks like that it's a great going for us we will miss zain very soon very fast i would really hope that you don't take my question very personally now no please go ahead <laughs> did my share lose some of its previous glory because i've been in the region for a long time if i look back at the entire mindshare history since it was launched in 1999 i can say the one thing that we miss is uh, unilever because i've been a management trainee during my business school days at unilever i worked on unilever in entire south asia i worked on unilever in this region before and when i went back to india again i was with unilever associated for seven and a half years so to me i think the one last glory if i have to say about mindshare is uh, what should i do to get unilever back <laughs> now it's very easy but i think uh, we got to live up to it and we are working very hard so sooner or later in a few years you will hear the news شو اللي تعلمتوا بالاخص بال2018 وبدكم تطبقوه بال2019 I think the biggest learning for this year and even last year if i have to say uh, is this uh, some of our good clients have cut down on the ad spends some of our existing clients very few have actually in fact increased the ad spend dramatically because they see a huge spurt and growth so it's a very funny thing in the same category in one market which is declining another category is jumping up in another marketplace to me the biggest learning is to say how do you keep at with your clients on a continuous basis support despite the spend drops and you continue to learn more because the lesser the budget the more challenging the planning is and it's all to do with planning it's not just sheer buying buying anybody can do it's a matter of how do i connect the brands make it exciting for the customers or consumers and make them demand more and therefore the sales sucker for me that's a big lesson and obviously every time we go in for a pitch some we win some we lose for whatever reason i think the answer is the wins always give a high energy and it makes it work better so for me it's a question of hold on to your existing clients grow with them and in the process if you are able to get new clients new category learnings great and that's the same thing that will continue in 2019 i would kindly want you to unveil some of the initiatives for 2019 and it would be something that you probably would want to share for the first time i think our biggest bet for going forward into 2019 and beyond it's not a one year play is what we started off in data and technology a year ago i think uh, the data and analytics is one critical area that fills the loop between what is happening versus what should happen and therefore this is one focus area that i have got for the next 2 years in fact we have now gone into a stage of beyond attribution modeling we are doing a lot more even uh, consumer segment mix modeling a new stuff in modeling exercise that was being introduced in this, this region and i am very proud to say some of our clients are already in the forefront and we are very glad that we are working with them on these areas so you will hear a lot more news from mindshare in the new areas of how do we bring analytics to live in terms of covering the gaps that exist in the marketing world ravi please let us know about a particular success story i'm sure you have lots of success stories but what is one that is meaningful to you i think the success story for me is to do with my core team uh, if i look at the 10 markets that i manage in middle east north africa i would say five countries out of 10 are led by women to me that's mm. a great one uh, they have continued to rally around with me and on mindshare they are doing extremely well and this is a good one they are being exposed to by going into global programs leadership programs to me it's the people that matter my team is what matters and it's been a great story so for me if i really look in the future 
I want these people, the good people, to actually kick me out as rapidly as they can because we need a change all the time. Every new change that occurs in an agency system comes with a new thought, new idea. So to me, the real day that I'm looking forward to is the day when they say, Ravi, bye-bye, enough of you in this agency because then I know I have a very strong team who are capable and who can manage. And that's what I want my team to do and that's what I'm pushing them for. What's the biggest loss for Mindshare? The biggest loss this year has been Zane. I would say that definitely. Uh, but uh, we are getting over it. Uh, and my good part is I know they will do very well, continue to grow. And they are in the hands of another good agency. So, But the difference is we are fierce competition when it comes to this. But when it comes to the client, I get my handover done tomorrow in a very nice way. I'm personally going because I want the best for Zane all the time. To me, it is a loss and at the same time, it's a gain because that gives me freedom to look at a host of newer clients that we have got. The energy can be focused and we want to make it grow as well. So in all aspects, it's a cycle business where we work in. Some agencies win and then they are on a winning spree and then suddenly you see a slackening. But for me, cycle or no cycle, I think the best idea is we move on, life goes on, and we want to be happy and do more successful launches for our clients and that's all I'm interested in. Hats off for your positive spirit, uh, Rafi. And uh, what's the biggest win? I think if I have to look at, I won't talk in terms of budgets, uh, but if I have to talk, one of the best wins this year that we have had as Mindshare across the network is Pizza Hut because it's opened up channels in so many different areas, including dealing with food aggregators. That's given a great joy to all of us. And the second thing is uh, we have had a lot of differences right from Touch Telecom in Lebanon to Tunisia Telecom in Tunisia. These have been great differences. We have beaten all the competition and for years we continue to handle. That gives a great pride for me and my team. So yes, we are still on. Last but not least, Ravi, I would like you to address anybody who is in the media industry and send them tips and advices or any message. So the one good thing I will talk about is the entire publishing and the media vendors per se, to say how else can you people try to get more ad spends unless you provide a real value for every dollar that comes through. So what I want to say is while we are working very hard to show how every dollar that we spend on advertising and media is benefiting brands growth, either in terms of awareness or ultimately leading to sales. Support us and make it work well. I think the one thing for that that I really wanted to happen is the TV meter in Saudi. That will change the landscape of marketing and media in this region for good. I think I've been here for far too long since 92 to realize the TV meters never really took off. To me, that's the single biggest thing that should work together. When that happens with the support of the vendors, because if the channels don't contribute enough, the TV meter is never going to go in. Clients, of course, yes, but to me, primarily, this is one thing that I really look for because I've seen three TV meters come and go in Saudi, and I really want this to succeed because that will change our lives completely in the process. I would like to thank you for your time and for all the information that you shared with us. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. الحياة داخل وكالة الإعلام هي عبارة عن سلسلة من الربح والخسارة المهم هو وجود استراتيجية لتأمن النجاح والاستمرارية بالأيام الحلوة والمرّة